Yo, what is going on guys? Jake Burton Tech here back with another video and another build log. So as you can see from that intro, I didn't do a whole lot to this build aside from swap motherboards. And that's what we're going to be talking about in this video today. We're going to talk a little bit about the platform change that I'm making going from what I thought was going to be an Intel build to an AMD build. We're going to talk about some of the components that can fit with certain components and kind of the combination of components and things to think about when you're building in the 11 dynamic mini i've swapped out parts quite a bit and so far it's just been super easy to build in even though we haven't even gotten to the water cooling part yet so like i said we didn't do a whole lot in this video but i think there's definitely some things we can talk about when it comes to this build we're working on so starting off let's talk about the platform change that i'm making going from what i thought was going to be an intel build do an AMD build and I don't want to dive too deep into this as I did make a video the last video that I uploaded was an Intel versus AMD and kind of things to think about and what is the best option for you in 2022 so you guys can check out that video as I dive way deeper into it but touching on the CPU platforms a little bit briefly I initially purchased a MSI mag b660m motherboard which is a intel 12th gen motherboard with the lga 1700 socket type so it's for 12th gen intel but after doing quite a bit of research i kind of feel like intel in going the 12th gen route probably isn't going to be the platform for me at the moment as its processing is quite a bit different than they've done in the past using e cores and p cores and really being optimized more for windows 11. So I decided I wanted to avoid being an early adopter of 12th gen and Windows 11, even though it's been out for a bit now. So I, I'm deciding to go the AMD route and we are probably going to do a 5900X for this build. So I ended up installing a ROG B550 Strix motherboard from Asus. I've always been a big fan of these Strix model motherboards. I think there is a lot of value for what you pay for. They're not super high end on the tier scale, but then they're not super inexpensive. They're kind of that fine medium giving you a lot of good features for a pretty reasonable price. And in this case, I really love the looks of this Strix motherboard as it is does have a white shroud and a lot of white and silver accents. So I think it's going to look really good in this case. So my only concern with going the AMD route was initially when you go with a Zen 3 chip, most motherboards from what i've heard need a bios update I actually haven't had an amd zen 3 chip in any of my personal rigs and none that i've worked on at work doing it work all that stuff's been zen 2 and i haven't had to do any bios updates but in this case from what i've heard there is a chance if you purchase a zen 3 chip and you try to run it on something like a b550 motherboard like we have and many of them out there you will need a bios update for it to be able to communicate with the CPU being a Zen 3 CPU. But from this B550 Strix motherboard that I purchased, it might be the time of manufacturing and when it hit the shelf, but on the box, it does say it's Zen 3 ready. So it might have the latest BIOS to run Zen 3. We'll just kind of have to wait and see if we get a post screen once we have the system put together. And in the case of a BIOS update, luckily for this Strix motherboard, we do have a BIOS flashback feature. So I won't need a zen 2 cpu to run a bios while the pc is booted up we can just do it via usb with the latest bios version and use that bios flashback feature now talking about the this particular case the lee and lee 11 dynamic mini and this particular motherboard being the rog strix and atx motherboard there are some things that will fit and won't fit when you go with the atx motherboard in this particular case and some other concerns I had when it comes to fitting certain components. A very notable thing about the 11 Dynamic Mini when it comes to mounting radiators, if you do go with a ATX size motherboard, you won't be able to top mount a radiator. Obviously you have the cutouts for it, but the clearance just isn't there when you go with that size motherboard. When you go down to micro ATX or ITX, you can then top mount a radiator. So with that option eliminated, this does it does make up for it where you can mount a radiator off to the side, a 240 or 280. 
as we have on our particular build and you can also mount a 360 to the bottom one thing i really wanted to note in this video and for people that are looking to build in the o11 dynamic mini is bottom mounting a radiator can be troublesome when it comes to the pci express lanes that you want to utilize in certain clearances and tolerances that this case will give you with the atx motherboard the big thing being, and I did talk about it in one of my previous videos talking about the L11 Dynamic Mini in one of the build logs. It might have been build log one, but my big concern was if I do go the ATX route, having enough clearance where I can mount a second PCI Express device and still have radiator clearance to where your radiator and your fans won't make contact and it won't block one of those PCI Express lanes. That is potentially a big issue. So you want to make sure when you are purchasing a ATX size motherboard, you want to take a close look at the placement of the PCIe lanes and make sure that they're not, you don't have two lanes, one that's kind of up top for your graphics card, notably, and one, the second one, you want to make sure it's not like at the very bottom of the motherboard. As in this particular case, you won't be able to mount any sort of device unless you don't have any fans or any radiators at the bottom and still you might have some issues mounting it then so for my particular build we're not going to be doing dual graphics card but a very important device that i've really fallen in love with is my elgato 4k60 pro which is a pcie capture card so i wanted to have a second lane available on the motherboard that i selected and making sure it's got plenty of clearance for that particular device to fit and as you can see i have some footage of it i didn't mount the 4k 60 pro but i took another single slot uh pci express device and just to kind of get a mock-up of where it would fit and as you can see with the particular radiator that i chose and the fans we do have enough clearance to fit this device and of course like i mentioned where that pci express lane fits on the motherboard gives us plenty of clearance for that device to fit in this case for this particular application now i think the atx size motherboard looks really nice in this case especially being the white strix motherboard that we selected the only thing i can really think of that can be a bit of a downside for this size motherboard in this case is we do have a little bit less radiator compatibility when we had micro atx i think we did have enough clearance where we can mount a 360 at the bottom and at the top and still have our 240 off to the side so we really could have done some serious cooling with micro atx but i decided to go back to an atx and i think we still have plenty of cooling even though we have a 360 slim at the bottom and the 240 off to the side and even though they're kind of slim radiators i think this will be plenty of cooling as i'm not looking to do any overclocking and usually the best kind of rule of thumb is to have 240 millimeters per component being your CPU and graphics card when overclocking or just 120 per component just for standard clock speeds. So looking around on like PC parts picker and just any Instagram, anywhere where I can get a view on some builds that are done in the O11 Dynamic Mini, I haven't seen too many people run an extra PCI Express device. So I really wanted to talk about that in this video. And like I mentioned, just make sure that you select a motherboard with decent PCI Express placement where you don't have and this is very common i've noticed on the latest 12th gen atx intel motherboards they're they mount that second pci express lane it's all the way at the bottom of the motherboard which in this particular case the o11 dynamic mini would pretty much make it useless so far i gotta say even though we haven't done the really complicated like rigid tube bends in this build we've kind of just been mounting some of the core hardware and cooling components the O11 Dynamic Mini has really been a pleasure to build in. Super easy and very intuitive. We've been able to switch different size motherboards very quickly. And overall, it's just a really good experience so far to build in this case. As you guys saw, we did have to move the rear I.O. plate back up a couple slots because we did switch motherboard sizes. But it's really easy with all those thumb screws on the back. And then we did have to flip around some fans just because of the orientation. That I had them on the radiator when mounted to the top as we are going for that cross flow airflow in this case where you have all the intake coming from the bottom a little bit of intake 
from the side mounted 240 millimeter radiator and then we'll have exhaust going across the top so this is kind of a positive pressure system but it should get us some really good cooling so that's going to be it for this video guys not a whole lot to this one but i definitely did want to log the changes that we made to the personal build that i'm slowly working on and i really did want to talk about fitting a atx motherboard in the 11 dynamic mini and how it fits with some of our water cooling hardware and having the need for that second pci express lane just to give you guys some insight if you're looking to do something similar so as you guys can see we are in need of quite a few more components so it'll probably be a little bit more before we get really get this build going and start doing some of the water cooling but the next video i might try and do like some custom cable extensions as it's something i really do want to do for this build and we do have that sfx power supply which has very short cables so it might need extensions anyway and the extensions always look nice so we might do a build vlog slash tutorial making our own custom sleeve cable extensions so that's it for this one guys thank you for checking this one out if you enjoyed it and found it helpful make sure to drop a like on it and if you want to see more tech related videos like this one be sure to subscribe as always guys thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video